Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast and happy, oh my God, Thursday. We made it to like almost the end of the week. Congratulations, everyone. We are <laughs> celebrating with one of my favorite people in the world. It's Taylor Strecker. Hey, girl, hey. Ooh. Thank you. I um, went right from the nostril. I'm the only one allowed to sing on the show. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> um, that's a lie. I've watched Ben sing. Yeah, it bothers me. I watched Jackie sing. Jackie's not threatening. Her voice is horrible. <laughs> you actually have a good voice. Therefore, like you're coming for my brand. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact about Taylor Strecker, she has like an incredible singing voice. We talked about last time I was on about my how ashamed I was of, your karaoke. of my performance, and I told everybody they could go to my Patreon to and see it, watch it. Our duets on there. Oh God, I can I can't wa ever watch my drunk we're really performances. good. We should do duets together. You like have such a good singing voice, and I feel like for the first many years of being your friend, yes, I um. I didn't know that about it's you. It's a secret. Are you like embarrassed? You like, know what it is? When I was younger, I oh, first stage of all, fright. I was Annie. <laughs> Not you to were brag. Annie. Yeah, in, I had to what? cut my hair and dye it. Was it bonfire red? Community theater or where in school? It, it was like a local production. Community theater. Um, community. <laughs> community theater. Daddy Warbucks was seventeen. I was 12. Oh. I had braces. Oh. They were raging. Oh. But like, I, I honestly actually looked really good with red hair and maybe I should consider. Wait, you really committed to the role. Why didn't you just put on a wig? I did. I kept itching. So you uh, shaved and dyed your hair? <laughs> well, I cut it here and then I tried to curl it and they were like, the curls. And I was work. like, it's, I'm not cutting my hair. Like, the little Dutch boy on the paint can. That is such a commitment to the theater. I'm the I'm, fact that you didn't further pursue <laughs> theater is shocking to me because that's a level that somebody uh -huh. who takes like theater yeah. seriously would do. I'm a thespian and a lesbian. Well, that's the truth. I actually put a timer on. I was like, how long is it into the episode? Are we either going to talk about lesbianism or Ozempic? And you made it a whole two minutes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you I'm so, so proud much. Of you. Are we going to also talk about Ozempic? Well, of course, I chose a story today yes. that has to do with Ozempic. We actually have great stories today, which I'm really excited about. Some thought provoking stuff. We actually have two Britney Spears stories. Hmm. And Britney is not someone we really like follow deeply. And I understand why. It's a little. It's sad. Sad, yes. It's chaotic. Yes. It's confusing. And I feel like half the things we're told are not true. So it's like, what's the point in getting invested when we're being fed lies? It's the most <laughs> confusing. But I feel like you're like a big Britney follower. I am. I actually got tickets to her concert when I was in college. So I was like, that's like a real fan. Like high school's like, you can be fans of everybody. It's true. But like to get your parents to like give you the money, like when you're younger, like to have your parents drive you, yes. you have to be like so dedicated that your parents are like, we have to get this bitch a ticket. But also it's like in high school, it's like, what the fuck else are you doing? So you're like, a concert. I always think like, what was I doing in high school? Actually, I went to a Jewish day school, which was dual curriculum. So I was in school from eight to five. That's insane. I know. And now like when I work, I'm like so tired after a few hours. I'm like, how did I do this as a young, a young lad? <laughs> young lad. I don't know. Oh, thank you uh -huh. for reminding me. I Please. wanted to ask you something. Please. Uh, there might be like an accusatory tone to my voice. And it's oh, because shit. I'm accusing you of something. <laughs> One of my favorite things about you as a person, as a friend and mm -hmm. as a podcast host mm -hmm. is your laugh. You have the best laugh. Where am I going to get angry at that? And you also, you don't hold it. Like, you don't withhold it from people. You laugh at people. No matter how funny, how big, how small the joke, you laugh. You make me feel so funny. You are so funny. And I thought that was like an exclusive to me thing. Oh, no. I was scrolling TikTok last night, and I, one of your podcast clips came up. You were podcasting with, two, I think, two other people. Oh, yes. And uh, they girls were, gotta eat. They were talking. Yes. And <laughs> my God. You were cackling, cackle, 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 like that nice raspy cackle that you have. And I was like, wait a damn minute. <laughs> I thought you really thought like I was that really hysterical. Wait a second, psycho. I do think you're that funny. You honestly. No, but you give that laugh to everyone. It doesn't feel that special is, now. That is not true. That sounds like I'm accusatory. You are being I am accusing. I'm accusing. Abusive? Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Is that everything you? <laughs> Listen, I love to laugh. I know it's one of your best qualities. I have been accused of like fake laughing, and that's I don't, not true. That's not what I was accusing you of. Thank you. I don't think you were fake laughing. Honestly, I just think you have like a low bar for comedy now. Like, not that they weren't funny; they were funny. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I thought like your crazy laugh like was just a me thing. They were being funny. Like, I'm not saying this also, is not a slight against your your fellow co-hosts. I also laugh at thyself. You do. I am hilarious and I crack myself up on the regular. It was just like hard for me. Imagine like you're scrolling TikTok and something that's so intimate. Like I'm it would sorry. be like you saw me talking about Ozempic with something with someone else. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, it's intimate. And I just wanted to like I wanted to come on here and ask you, like, 
are you, you know, putting it on for me? <laughs> no. Are you faking with me? I am not faking a laugh orgasm okay. with you. Okay. I think you, okay, a lot of people make me laugh, but you make me laugh the hardest. It's like one of the rudest things anybody's <laughs> ever said, but I love you for it and thank you for lying to me. You're a good friend. You are fucking hilarious. You're an amazing friend. No, you really are so funny. It's like, because as somebody who also like has to be funny for their job, right. it's quite, it can be intimidating. Yeah. Because like, Especially like, I mean, here you make me laugh, but like also when we're not doing our jobs, the way, I mean, you're never we not are on. funny. Like You're never not on. Neither you're are hilarious. You. By the way, you are so funny and you're my favorite type of funny because like when we're FaceTiming or just like having dinner, you are not trying to be funny. <laughs> you are so naturally like physically and conversationally funny. That's why I'm always telling you to get into stand up. You are really like a, a, a very natural funny person. This wasn't meant to be a... Uh, but compliment. we always do. This but wasn't we meant always to be a compliment do. fest. I was yelling at you. <laughs> but see what I did? You de- That's so Taylor I Shredder. I Jedi mind tricked you. You were so Taylor Shredder. <laughs> I'm just like sunshine and light and love. I'm so happy you're here for a multitude of reasons. You know how much, I, like every time you ask me, you're like, oh, I'm sorry. It's, I feel like it's such a big ask I for you to come into it. the city in the morning. I don't like, care. Get all I dressed it. up. I figured it out in the last three weeks. You have, Taylor was 12 minutes early today. And we started early. We started early because of that. And the city is on fire because of UN General Assembly and the president is in town. Every street is closed. It's fucking torture. I'm glad I missed like half of it while I was in Florida. So I figured I was expecting you to be late. I myself was running a little behind. I take the subway like a plebe. You are so committed to your craft. Thank you. Now, the other reason I'm really excited that you're here is because you were here last week and I love podcasting with you and I always rewatch our episodes. I actually did not rewatch our episode. Um... And you can attest to this. What? Last week? Last week. You were spiraling. I was really not okay. As the episode progressed, like I'm getting worse and worse. My stomach is like really hurting me. Yes. And I'm starting to like not feel great. And I've been like, I've had a cold for like the last week. I don't have COVID. I took a test. Everybody being like, you have COVID. You're spreading. I didn't. I took a test. Shut up. (laughs) Um, But I started to like deteriorate over the course of the hour long yes. podcast that by the time we ended, I was like wrapping up so quickly. You can attest, I yeah. ran out of the studio to yes. go poop. Like, it's called the fever. I, like it was coming over me. It's the dia fever. It was coming over me. Yes. And I just felt like I didn't do a good job. I like wasn't listening to you. And then we like we posted this picture and everybody was like, oh my God, Taylor looks amazing. And I'm standing there being like, <laughs> I put my makeup on and got dressed too. And I even tried like a little extra hard because you always come in stunting on these hoes. So I, I tried like a little extra hard outfit wise. Nobody commented a single word that is not true because i posted it in feed on my you did because you look so great well, hello and i look so average i'm not <laughs> you didn't look average. i did i did nobody was like what so are you many so people lies no they so were many all people wrote, about you you they, are both so gorgeous listen no they were all about my, you. so today i got <laughs> you know what today i had the time Today I put on my Hermes belt, my Aritzia pants. I flat ironed my motherfucking hair. I'm sick of you coming in here on my show and showing me up. Even though you still look better than me today. That and is your not true. Nine inch stilettos and your blazer. I mean, red bottom, bitch. Oh shit, I'm wearing ugly ass <laughs> Vince Camuto. Vince Camuto while she's wearing Louboutin. Wait. Remember when I can't walk in these FYI? They're just for show. I understand. Um, remember when we were at Surf Lodge? Okay. And my sister-in-law made a comment about everybody wearing free people, and Claudia was like, "My whole outfit. I'm is wearing free people. Literally free people." And, and I then loved she was it. like, "She was like, no, 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 it's not like a bad thing." Yeah, she was like, "Why is like everybody wearing free people?" Like, free, she was like ragging on free people, and then it took me a second to realize my shirt and my matching shorts or from free people and i'm like ashley what the fuck are you trying to say I can't, bitch I can't. What, the, not, what the fuck are you trying to say her face she and was she like, was like no like free people like i wasn't saying it like that and i'm like okay ashley eat my ass bitch grab a fork and eat it so I just wanted to clarify why I was excited to be here and why yes. I look absolutely beautiful. You look stunning. You look like a lady who lunches. You look, we are, we are so beautiful. I'm business Barbie. And You're I'm, lady who lunch Barbie. I'm like Labor Day Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> and this whole like no wearing white. It's bullshit. What are, what are your thoughts on that? They say you can't wear hmm. white after Labor Day, even though summer doesn't typically end for about 20 days after Labor Day. Like, Summer is over September 21st. Literally. Oh, shit. Today. That's literally today. Okay, first of all, you are in cream, a.k.a. winter white. Okay. You could wear this in the dead of winter with a boot. That's with really, a brown boot. That's really nice, but like it's white. 
No, it's not. It's it's like ivory. I almost wore a white, white puffy shirt, and I was like, oh, it's like the end of summer. I'm going to look ridiculous. Oh, sh- are you saying I look ridiculous? No. Oh, my goodness. That's what it's These like. are treacherous waters today. I'm like incredibly insecure today. Oh my God. I don't know what it is. Like I thought the Ozempic would bring out like my fiercer side. Yes. But actually, and let's talk about this for real. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this because I'm going to post Confidence and fierceness like pre-Ozempic and post. Let's talk about it. Okay. So, well, I, I've heard you talk on the Patreon about like your journey, which gave me like even more insight to your Ozempic fifis than mm-hmm. I ever even knew. But like to hear, like I was crying, like BRB oh. crying, sobbing when I listened to it because the way that you were like, I was so confident before and now like I'm feeling insecure, which like blew my mind because like your confidence has always been my most the most inspiring thing about you thank in our friendship you. like I'm like I want to be confident like Claudia like I literally am obsessed with it yeah thank you so but then to hear that the Ozempic made you like less confident first of all was confusing yeah it is Britney Spears confusing yeah Britney Spears confusing BSC but then, <laughs> but then also known as Ben Soffer celebrity <laughs> <laughs> but then I just like I, like, I'm very Did you relate to it or no? No, because okay. well, I was so deeply insecure before and right. I have been so deeply insecure my whole life. Yeah. And now's the first time that I'm like, I, we're usually right in step on our feelings. Yeah, and so no, we were, we're having opposite. Total departure. I feel the most confident I've ever felt. But then uh, my producer, Heva, sent me a clip for <laughs> Taste of Taylor because Taste of Taylor comes out today. Check it out. Taste of Taylor. Who's on it? My friend Nicole from college. So we oh, were yeah, like- Always talking about your friend Nicole. College besties. Yeah roommates worked it serious together oh, wow. so like we go like back, back into the trenches we talk about like skinny dicks that we fucked right, right we right. go in but i look hideous in this okay. video and i was like <clears throat> i need to get a facelift yeah. i need to get like um what's that i um, got it kybella but kybella. not kybella the but other one i heard it doesn't work kybella i went to the plastic surgeon to get kybella and she was like i actually really do not recommend it's 50 percent of people don't have uh actual results and it's incredibly painful ooh, ooh, no but she had a, a procedure that she recommended which is what i ended up getting called the natural neck lift maybe i'll connect oh, you with dr Gizzi oh, if you want to get it ooh. i know a lot of people who have gotten it I want it. At the same time. And then I think a lot of people got it at Dr. Geezy because I went. She told me like she, no. she does them all the time now. And she said. Did you have to like go under? No, no. Oh. It's a Valium. Excuse her? Yeah. It works? Yeah. Could she put me down? I, I, by the way, Olivia Oshry <laughs> will tell you the story. I should have her come on the podcast and tell the story. She escorted me to the surgery. I'm dead. And I'm sitting in the, in the uh, doctor's office, not the the OR room yet and they give me the Valium and it starts to hit and like I'm in heaven like it, I was cackling me and Olivia were having such a good time Olivia goes to sit in the waiting room I go all the way back to the operating room she has an operating room in her um, office and Olivia hears blood curdling no, screams no they numb you by the way so I did not feel a thing but I was awake so I could hear like the <laughs> clanging of and, like, the- metals I could hear like cuts like you could hear cuts and i was screaming olivia was like what is going on do you have a recollection of it yes no yeah briefly and then she gave me more and she was like listen this is the most i can give you we're not in a hospital like this like you just have to just grin and bear it no 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 no. like i i tell you taylor the results okay were worth double the pain will you come with me yeah of course can you like can i vlog in (laughs) yes by the way i'll sit in okay Then, then I'm in. I'm in. But wait, we were we were having a, a more important conversation. <clears throat> oh, about confidence. Confidence. So we're having opposite sort of journeys. Well, no, not as of last night. I'm like, fuck. Um, now I'm insecure you, again. Well, that's the thing about being a person on camera or just anyone who's Ugh. ever had a photo or video taken of themselves. Sometimes you will see a photo of yourself, whether it be you know candid or staged. Yep. And it will truly alter the ground in which you walk on. It is a life earth shattering moment where you're like, it's. Holy shit. It's, it's Is that what I look like? Masochistic to have a job on camera. But there but then there's other moments where it's like you'll see a photo of yourself and you'll be like Is that what I look like? Okay. Or you'll be like is that what I look like? It's never like that's what I look like. It's either right. you're in shock or me last de- week in my denim del- outfit or you have a deluded sense of self like and you've been wrong this whole time. So, but the thing though, and I know this because I've lived a long time because I'm old as fuck, mm-hmm. but I remember that I did this video with Cosmo way back in the day. And when I watched it, I was like, I'm hideous. But now and then, if you go and watch Now it, I go and I'm like, hello, cute as a button. Yeah. So there's a thing where it's like, I have to take a beat because in my immediate reaction to how I look is usually 
terrible. I know. Unless it's like me in a, you know, Canadian tuxedo last week. Let me say, I think if I had to think about it, like really, and this might not be like an exact reflection of my feelings, but it's just a guess. I think my, and I'm still like a really confident person, but I think now having lost so much weight, like people, when you're overweight, like people just completely disregard you. Like mm -hmm. you are not considered in any real way. Um, so it's easy to like live in your own world. You're really in your own lane. And yeah. it's very easy to be confident when you're in, you know, a party of one. But then when you lose weight, you start being compared to everyone else. Like you're actually considered as a human being. And now I feel like I'm up against other people. And that's harder for me to be the most confident person in the room. Wow. I feel totally Opposite? different. Okay, yes. Let's go. I felt like <clears throat> I was on an island of one and everybody could see me. That's what it felt like. And that made you feel bad. And also, like, let's get real. Like, my wife is tall and thin. Her sisters are, like, tall and thin. Honestly, being in a lesbian relationship, oh, like, don't that has to add another started. element of, like, female, I want to say almost, like, competition ever. A million percent. Like, when you guys get dressed for the night, are you always like, oh, shit, she looks better than me? I have psychotic breakdowns over it. Oh, my God, I've literally never once thought about Ben's outfit, like, in regards to mine. Oh, my God. I remember there was one time where I was going to the VMAs. I was walking. Is and this white dress? White dress. But Those like we, titties. We so had saggy. just become friends during the white dress saga. Oh my God. And I have to say, your VMA white red dress saga has to be one of the funniest, most Taylor Strecker things ever. I remember we had just met like maybe like a year before. Yeah. We weren't like super tight, but we had met a bunch of times and like I really liked you and I followed you on Instagram and I saw she was getting ready for the VMAs. I'm like, oh my God, how exciting. And I'm like literally following the stories and she has two dresses. Yep. She, will she wear the white one or will she wear the red one? She tries them both on. Both on. She does a pull, and it's like so clear that the red dress is the better option. It's, oh my god! I literally did that. It's so pull. much more flattering. You look snatched. <sighs> it's just a better dress. And I thought I'm like she's just you know making content because there's no way she's gonna wear the white one. So you know what's crazy? Cut to her picture of her on the carpet, white dress. I was just making content, knowing I was gonna wear the white one. And then my parents like did the ultimate sinful thing as Wait, parents. They, you wanted to automatically wear the white one? I was into the white one. I thought that the red one was Nuts. too like, I'm going to the White House gala. Well, the white, Not fucking, the well, the white one was too much, I'm going to a gentleman's club. <laughs> but it's the VMAs. It wasn't your best look. It wasn't. No kidding. And then I did this severe pony with like this sad little rat tail in the back. <laughs> it was a disaster. But I was feeling insecure. And my parents were like, the red one is more flattering, which I'm like, you know what that does to me? No, the word flattering for Ugh. a parent means you look thinner. Yeah, you look flubby, schlubby in the other one. And I'm already in the limo. I was like, Ugh. you guys, you're so stupid. You yeah, know, a parent should know once you're off, you're off and you just send them off with confidence. So I had a full meltdown in the white limo, which was like, why am I in a white Extremely limo? Extremely tacky. And uh, Tay was there and I asked Tay, please don't wear heels. Please wear flats because I already feel insecure and you are already so much taller than me. So you even taller. She's a gazelle. Look like a, a lumpkin. A tree trunk. Yes. I understand. And she was like, okay, okay. And then right before we were leaving, she was like, nope. And she grabbed heels. And I was like, you selfish piece of shit. I berated her the entire ride. And then she didn't even end up coming on the red carpet with oh, me. Oh, because she was so battered by you? Yeah, so battered and abused. That's such an interesting element of being in a relationship it's with really a woman. It's really hard. Honestly, I do, there are a lot of things about lesbianism that I think are envi totally. envious. Totally. Like, you have a built-in best friend, cycle sisters, like so many things. But that this is not one of them. Is not something I envy at all. It happened before Jackie's <laughs> wedding too, and we all know what happened oh. at Jackie's wedding. Oh, you guys were like fighting about outfits. You share clothes. I threw my Chanel on the ground, and the next day, Karl Lagerfeld died. Coincidence? I don't think so. Definitely not. I killed Karl Lagerfeld. That's something you have to live with. <laughs> and Karl, unfortunately, won't. Well. Um, do you guys share clothes? No, because that could be like a fun like no thing it's about triggering. lesbian. Okay. We used to, and I said I can't anymore. I had this amazing of course Zara navy blue jumpsuit high waisted halter low low back mm -hmm. I'm short so I would like belt it right like it wasn't ideal but whatever and then one day Tay was like panicked for a wedding she was like I need to wear something I was like oh wear that and when she came out I was like oh You're that's how it's supposed to fit oh that's tough that's tough no so I said it's far too triggering I'm too insecure I can't I really I just can't I can't okay. see you in the clothes that I love also that no longer fit me well that's the thing is Ugh. like I never have to like you know 
size out of clothes which happens to me all the time and then have Ben wear it like that would be hard it's really it's like sometimes it happens with my sisters yes but sisters is different because like if your sister looks good and like you're getting her ready for an event or something like you right. really just want her to look good and yes your feelings don't matter exactly there was one time that Tay was in Cannes I had this adorable bikini and like it's very hard for me to find <clears throat> bathing suits that fit yeah and a, a string bikini never wow. in her life uh -huh. so well it wasn't fitting mm. and she was in Cannes for work and she took a picture of herself in a bikini on the beach, which, like, first of all, is egregious. It's just hurtful, yeah. Like, so, it was, like, thirsty and also, like, oh, insensitive. Not the thirsty. <laughs> and she was wearing my bikini. Wow. And I was mad that she took a picture and felt good about herself. Yeah. Because I'm psychotic. Yeah. But what I made it about was, like, so you took my bikini without asking me? That's no, very sister of you. We fight about clothes the way sisters do. That is, like, one of, like, the great traumas of my childhood was, like, <laughs> taking a shirt from Jackie Olivia and Margo. Yep. And, like, seeing them in school and then being, like, you literally like forcing me into the bathroom being like take it off I'm like well what the fuck am I supposed to wear they're like take it off right now and like literally like snitching on me I mean we all did it to each other it wasn't but like what I was would you do victim. when you had to take it off I, I you wouldn't actually but like there would be a moment where I'd yes. be like wait are you really asking me to take my fucking pants off in school like, you mean my pants right yes <laughs> You mean my pants? You mean my pants? Oh, I would have made you walk around in your like saggy granny panties. Oh my God. And then like sometimes if you got away with it, like if you were, I was in middle school and like Jackie was in high school, so we were in different buildings. Ugh. She wouldn't see me wearing the shirt and like I would get home and like run and race and put it away. You would get away with it. And then like a week later, like somebody would put like a mobile uploads photo of you on Facebook wearing the shirt. And like Jackie would be like, is that my shirt? And they should always leave a nasty comment being like, my shirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 you in social My media. Shirt. It's the best way to punish someone yeah. for stealing. We can never get away with that in this day and age because people like upload Instagram stories in real time. Yes. Like, it would always be like a week later, somebody would do like a dump of their mobile uploads album on Facebook. And you would literally, and you would forget because you got away with it. You'd be like, oh, I'm scot free. Uh -uh. But then you ne always forget about the mobile uploads. My sister and I literally got into the worst fight of our life over my mom's Uggs. Uh -huh. I strangled her and we broke the bathroom door. Wow. So, you know. Were you guys physical fighters as sisters? Not until this point. I was like oh. in my late 20s and she was in oh, her early 20s. Oh. It was like not okay. When we were young, we were very, like we would, like our house, like it was like a slap. We wouldn't like punch and kick. It was always a slap on the arm or like wherever we could get them. Like fra, fra, we used to call it a frost, which I think means like punch in Yiddish. And like, we would be like, I'll give you such a frost. Like, <laughs> wait, who was the most violent? Olivia. <laughs> she was the hesitation. strongest. Olivia was definitely like the most tactile. And oldest. And oldest. So she kind of, she really was the ruler of us. Like yes. if no one else was around, like we had to defer to Olivia. Like that's just how we grew up respecting like the eldest. Right. And she definitely like was on a power trip because of it. <laughs> and honestly, she was the most physically strong. Uh huh. But maybe I would say like I was the most reckless with my slaps. Like she would dole them out like when necessary. But if you got a slap from Olivia, like hospital. Hospital. She was. She's a very strong girl, and I was just kind of like nuts and careless with my frost. Yeah, chaotic. Yeah, energy. Ginger spice energy. Oh, I wanted to kind of like address some rumors, and I'm glad that you're here because you can um, you can uh, speak to them directly. Okay. I've been seeing some people being like, "What's going on with Claudia and Brian?" I haven't like. I actually haven't seen Brian. He was traveling all summer. I spoke to him the other day, but like, I literally have not seen him physically. Maybe in two months. The internet is so. Turned. And then we, um, you went to dinner with Brian. Yes. And I think people thought like, wow, the crew is getting smaller. They're leaving Claudia out. And let me just say. Claudia I, doesn't want to go to. I was invited to the dinner. Yeah. I had, I had a family Shabbat dinner that night. And I could have, yes, I could have. Shabbat dinner was early. I could have then met you guys. But I really wasn't going to meet you guys at that vegan restaurant. Like that to me is just like not worth my time. Or vegan my, Michelin star. Your two least favorite things on the face of the planet. Right. I was like, no, you guys go. And then I saw the stories. I'm like, oh my God, no offense. Like that food literally looks hard. I would never have, I would not have eaten one morsel of food. You wouldn't have. Unless we talked about it at dinner. Was there a bread basket? We talked about it at dinner, yes. Was there? But the butter was like sunflower oil oh butter. Oh my God. Oh, because it's vegan. Exactly. I'm so glad. So yeah. I just want to clear the air and Taylor can attest like me and Brian are good. We had like a two hour FaceTime like two nights ago. Wait, you're going to die. I totally forgot about this. I got a text like, I don't know, I guess like two weeks ago at this point from Jackie Schimmel. And okay. she was like, we are in a fight, question mark. I would love to know why. And I was people like, thought. people thought that you and I on oh. my podcast, Taste of Taylor, when we were talking about Ozempic, we were, I was talking specifically about an influencer I know that I love, uh -huh. but that like talk mad shit about Ozempic. Oh, and yeah. people just immediately, like, I don't even think Jackie even talks about Ozempic. Okay, I want to say a few things. One, 
I actually don't even know who you're talking about. I meant to ask you after we stopped recording, but we had dinner and You definitely drinks. don't know this person. Okay. A million percent. So one, uh, you'll have to tell me that after. Two, I never for a second thought it was Jackie Schimmel. I love Jackie Schimmel. Love. And I think if anything, if Jackie Schimmel was the type of person who struggled with her weight, which I just think she's one of those God-given queens who doesn't, doesn't. Yep. I think she would be the first person in line for Ozempic. Oh my and God. I, and I haven't heard her say a single bad word Not about it. one thing. But I think if she was asked about it. And even if she did, I w honestly wouldn't care. No, but even if she was asked, if she was asked about it, just based on what I know about her, I think she would like be all for it. I agree. Oh, okay, so you wanted to clear that up too. Well, yeah, so like, but the internet is crazy. The internet loves like friendships yep. ending. No, and then like- Psychotically it, obsessed then actually. Then it makes me like self-conscious because I'm really not like a great friend in the sense where I'm like, we're going to have lunch once a week and we'll always stay Who in touch. Who is? No, it's like there have been months that go by where I don't physically see you, but we talk all the time. Yes, it breaks my heart. And having like the internet chime in, I'm like, oh I my know. God, I need to be like a better friend. I, I literally have, didn't see Brian all summer. Summer was crazy. No, and Brian is like literally I didn't the see world. You all summer. Brian said world's number one traveler. We all hung out July Fourth weekend, and then I don't think I saw any of you physically. Nope. No, since then, except you and I to work. Yes, of course. And Brian also doesn't live in the state anymore. Literally, he has a farm. So if I want to see him, I have to drive ninety minutes. You gotta schlep. You know what we should do? A oh, weekend where we go apple picking. Well, by the way, like we are doing that, but you're not here for um, Dean's first birthday, <sighs> right? You're not well, coming. Now the internet's gonna think I'm not friends with Dean. <laughs> you know what? They'd be correct. No, yeah. Dean, Dean is my number one arch enemy. Honestly, ever since <laughs> Dean like started that stuff with you on July 4th weekend, it's been kind of different in the friend group. Keep in mind, everyone, Dean is one years old. <laughs> but he knows what he did. He is so, so pointed. He's kind of manipulative. He's cunning. Yeah, he's kind of manipulative. Very hurtful. Very hurtful. Pointed. I just wanted to clear that up. I feel good about it. And now we can move on with our lives. Um, Taylor Strucker, I have a question for you. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. For the Fast Five stories that you need to know. Mm -hmm. Today's episode of The Toast is brought to you by the State Farm Personal Price Plan. The State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you create a plan that gives you options so you get an affordable price. And it comes with a lot of benefits like the coverage you want, a policy that helps cover what's important to you, and an affordable price just for you. Because after all, life is just better when you can personalize your experiences. So think about it like this. What do your music playlists, podcast feeds, and social media scrolls all have in common? Well, spoiler alert, they are a reflection of you. We all know my social media is full of girlies on their Ozempic journey, the Roman Empire, et cetera, et cetera. And Jackie, you know, she doesn't even have TikTok. So we're so different, even though we're so similar because so personal, you know, State Farm gets that. That's what the State Farm personal price plan is all about. And that's what it has in common. It gives you options to help you personalize your coverage so that you can protect what you care about most at an affordable price just for you. You're also going to see more of yourself in everything you love. And that includes your insurance. So it's so specific. It's so personal. You know, what do you have a home? You have a trailer, you have a RV, you have a bike, you have a motorcycle, are you a renter? Like so many things. State Farm has got you covered. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. there. Call or go to statefarm.com today to create your State Farm personal price plan. Prices vary by state, options selected by customer, availability and eligibility may vary. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Again, go to call or go to statefarm.com today to create your State Farm personal price plan. Prices do vary by state, options selected by customer, availability and eligibility may vary. Today's episode is also brought to you by Quince. Even though my closet was overflowing with clothes, I felt like I had ne never had anything to wear. Then I found Quince and have finally given my closet the upgrade that we both desperately needed. I built out a capsule wardrobe with iconic pieces that can be styled for any occasion. I have to say, the pieces I've gotten from Quince have completely changed my wardrobe. I learned on TikTok about like a capsule wardrobe where every piece you have can be worn multiple ways. You invest in really good things as opposed to like, you know, a bunch of like, uh, you spend uh, like a lot of money on a ton of clothes that are like cheap. You invest in good pieces and it will transform your wardrobe because you can wear them so many different ways. And Quince is perfect for that. They create timeless classics that will never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever and that makes putting together an outfit way easier. Qu uh, Quince has all the capsule wardrobe must-haves like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50, suede and leather jackets, and silk blouses and dresses. And the best part is that all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Because they partner with top factories, they can cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. 
which we love. I also love the pieces that I've gotten from there. I have this amazing cashmere sweater that I have worn so many different times, but like you wouldn't notice because I style it differently every time. I also got a great pair of black trousers that I haven't been able to wear yet because they're more like fall. I'm going to start wearing them soon on the toast. And I just feel like they're going to be my go-to pant for the season. And I'm really excited about it. So take the drama out of planning an outfit and upgrade your closet with Quince today. Go to quince.com slash toast for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash toast and get free shipping and 360 and 365 day returns. That's quince.com slash toast. All right, first one, I'm excited to talk about this because I saw it a few days ago and I didn't choose it because it seemed so silly to me, but now there's much more to understand. Okay, so I had seen this headline that Whoopi Goldberg has been defending Hassan Minaj and his right to embellish stand-up stories. Yes. She said, why would comics tell exactly what happened? It's not that interesting. And that's a headline that I saw and I completely agreed. Yes. I was like, oh, I guess it's come out that like Hassan has been like embellishing details of certain stories he tells on stage. And I can't even believe that this is like a controversy because first of all, same like everyone does that of course it's you know just a comics tell from their own lives and these stories that are really crazy but when you when it comes time to making jokes like you embellish like small details yes. or things people said just to make it funnier for the audience of course although i will say my set for stassi's tour was a hundred percent based in truth in truth like and that's it's i, on, I honestly sometimes should just be like yeah i made it up I think yeah, to my mom to so, make her feel better. Of course. But of I course, didn't. Of course. I did not. Um, so I didn't even think the story was really worth discussing. But then I actually saw a video that explained the entire saga. And it's a little bit deeper than Whoopi saying, oh, we all comics embellish. Okay. So... There were a few incidents that Hasan Minhaj has become under fire for. And if you're not familiar with Hasan Minhaj, he's a huge stand-up comedian. He has Netflix specials. He has, uh, he's uh, the replacement for uh, Trevor Noah on The Daily Show. Oh, and, shit. Yeah, he's like major. Okay. So what he's being accused of is like a little deeper than just, you know. I'm embellishing. Yeah. So there are a few stories that have, you know, that he told on stage that have come out as not being true. And the stories that he is telling are incidents where he experienced racism, which I think people are a little um, kerfuffled by because there's really no need to embellish racism. Right. It's a real thing. Right. Um, and so the story that I think started this whole saga was a story he told about when he went to prom with a girl at the kind of, you know, pre-prom where everybody takes pictures and gives corsages. Right. The girl wouldn't give him the corsage and gave it to another guy um, because Hassan Minaj is brown. And that's a crazy, you know, disgusting story. Yeah, disgusting. And, you know, people found out who the girl was. That's kind of easy to, like, track yep. who your prom date was. Found out who it was, tracked her down, It's also a horrific her. story. So horrific. it's like, we're going to figure out who this motherfucker is. They sent her threats, like, the whole thing. And it actually turns out that that girl never went to prom with Hassan Minaj. He had asked her, like, weeks prior. She said no. I think maybe she had a date with someone else. <gasps> and she never went to prom with him. So this is where it's like kind of, you know, getting past embellishing and just like a little a little bit of a it's danger just a zone. Just straight up lie. Then there's another story he told about receiving an envelope with anthrax. Shit. And that is true. He did receive an envelope with anthrax. Okay. And he goes on to tell the story how he opened it in front of his family and his baby had to go to the hospital. How? Which is insane. That's horrific. Then as it turns out, he did receive an envelope with anthrax, but he did not open it. No one in his family had to go to the hospital, and the hospital story with his baby was embellished as well. Okay, now here's my question, because he's a comedian. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so if you're like embellishing, okay, fine, fine. So I tell a, sto a story about a strap-on, and then I look like Donald Trump because I was so right. orange. I was slightly orange. I wasn't Donald Trump orange. That, that, that's an exaggeration. That's an exaggeration and the perfect example of like what a comedian would just say you, you can do. Yeah, you punch it up. It's going to be just up. a little bit more funny. So what's so interesting is, the way people found out that these stories weren't true right. was he literally sat down with the New Yorker and admitted that several stories he told in stand-up routines over the years were embellished. Okay. One such story involved an anthrax scare that his family faced in his 2022 Netflix comedy special. Okay. He said that his daughter came into direct contact with the white powder and had to go to the hospital to make sure it wasn't anthrax. The comedian admitted that that part of the story was not true, although he did have an anthrax scare that his daughter was present in the room for. Now, here's the thing, though. Like... I haven't listened to his special, so I, I don't have all the information, but like, how is anthrax and a child coming into contact with it funny? I know. You know, it's like, I know. If, if you're embellishing for comedy, fine, but it sounds like he's just telling a story. It I, That doesn't sound like it's going to punch up the punchline. Right, and so... It's almost I, like it, it's a downer. Yeah, no, and then when it when you admit that it's not true, it's just like, it just delegitimizes so... Like, it's just, why would you do that? And I saw a great video recapping it, and this is how... The video that I had saw that... 
that I was like, oh, this is much more than just embellishment, was from KFC, who's a Barstool guy. Yeah. He, he said, you know, of course, all comedians embellish. It's part of the art form. It's really not a big deal. But that's to make people laugh. Right. And so much of Hassan Minaj's comedy is to make people think. Okay. And when you're going to lie. Exactly. It, it's fraudulent. Lying about a funny story, embellishing, it feels like th th that fits into the rules. Lying about trauma is kind of a big no-no. I know. And it's actually happening right now. I know you don't watch, but I'm Roni. Oh. Like, they're like, they are like, ugh. it's like the trauma Olympics. And oh my it's God. That's, so infuriating. That's the culture we live in. It's like, who could be the biggest victim? Like, it's it's like, it's a competition. It's so annoying. And thank God for our girl, Uba. Because uh -huh. she's like, so they're fighting over, I had zero dollars in my bank account. Well, I had 20. And Uba's like, zero, 20. It's bad no matter how you slice oh it or dice God, it. so dumb. Voice of reason. Thank you, I love Uba. Her. But like, it really is like, I'm watching it in real time happen. And like, shout out to Watch Your Crappens. I love them. And I listen a lot to them. So I'm like, regurgitating their opinions. Yeah, yeah, Credit yeah. where credit's due. But like, they're like so frustrated with like, you guys like let people share their stories, but like there is this fight with this one girl, Jessel, and it's like, she's lying about her trauma. And I actually don't think Ooh. she is. I think that they What's just her like- What's trauma? They're, they're doing this like, I'm the poor, I was the poorest. Right. Meanwhile, they're all now rich. Right. So like, it doesn't matter. Right. But um, this one side is obsessed with the fact that she was poor and I, I, it was a struggle, it was trauma. Yeah, and she's proud. But like, they want Jessel to tell her story and she's like, oh yeah, I struggled. It's not the same struggle as Sai, but right. everybody's cuts hurt. It's just, it's crazy. But the point is, is that people get really mad when they think you're lying about trauma, for sure. No, whether you are or aren't. And it just, Team it, Jessel. it invalidates your your whole message. Yes. So here's what Wibby Goldberg had said. If you're going to hold a comic to the point where you're going to check up on stories, you have to understand a lot of it is the exact is not the exact same thing that happened because why would we tell exactly what happened? It ain't that interesting. There's information that we will give you as comics that will have grains of truth, but don't take it to the bank. That's our job, a seed of truth, sometimes truth and sometimes total BS. And while I agree with that, I don't think it applies here. Yeah. I agree. It's, you know, Hassan Minhaj has gotten so popular for his kind of, you know, not polarizing, but um, thought-provoking thought comedy. And it's comedy that's really, it's, it's of course supposed to make you giggle, but it's really supposed to, you know, help you, you know, uh, alter your, your view of the world. Like, it's, it's more serious than that. It's not like dumb penis jokes. Like, right. It's, it's more mature than that. So I do think there's a higher bar, and I don't know, it's really weird. Yeah. I don't think it'll affect him. It'll just be one of those things, like, uh, on his resume. But I do think it's really fucking weird. I think it's kind of, yeah. I, it's not a good look. Yeah. And I understand, like, the ideology of com comedians supporting this yes. ideal. Because it's like, well, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and drag him for it. But, like, th this is a specific circumstance. I agree. And I, I think it's wrong. I, yeah, I do. I do, too. Um, okay, next story. Britney Spears' handlers are keeping her from a 60 Minutes promo after her wild Instagram posts. <sighs> So her upcoming tell-all will just have to speak for itself because we hear that every TV outlet, including CBS's esteemed 60 Minutes, is gunning for an interview with the pop star ahead of the release of her highly anticipated memoir, The Woman in Me. Sources tell Page Six her team does not feel that she's ready to do a sit-down interview. One source pointed to Spears' eccentric Instagram posts as yeah. one of the reasons her team is shutting down any interviews. But another source close to the singer insists that the decision is solely resting with Spears. She's a free woman. She'll decide it's her choice, they said. She had offers and she doesn't want to do anything. She, of course, has had a complicated relationship with the media ever since she hit the scene as a exactly. teen in 1998. Yeah, she's been straight up traumatized by, I mean, reputable news anchors. We, we've seen all those Diane Sawyer interviews. Right. Like, these are people that, like, we as Americans trusted. I think we can use past tense here. Yes. But, like, when Diane Sawyer is coming for you, like, you have America on your side. And so... Times are different, but I understand why she's like living in a time capsule. Yeah, and I do want to say like I don't think 60 Minutes would be a good platform for Britney. It's no. so serious and like political and I don't think people like turn to it for pop culture. Yeah. I think there are so many different platforms in this day and age that are so the opposite of those Diane Sawyer days. Yes. I think of course like a podcast. I could see her doing like a Jay Shetty. Yep. Um, Somebody who's gentle safe. and empathetic. Yes. Yep. I could see her really doing a podcast because there's really no limitations and they could Shh. edit it in the way that she wants. She do the toast. I mean, of course, she's always welcome. <laughs> I could also see her doing something, you know, very Meghan and Harry did with Oprah. Yes. Where Oprah's very like a safe space. Although didn't Oprah, oh, 
There's this new documentary. I don't know if it's on Netflix, but I watched it. And it's about um, the supermodels of the 90s. Like yes, Naomi. we talked about it yesterday. And one of them, I, I have not gotten that far, but uh, brought up Oprah, kind of like dragging Oprah. Yes, uh, Cindy, uh, Cindy Crawford said that Oprah made her get up on her show and like, show off her body to everyone when she was 16 in a way that felt very bizarre mm, 16 okay interesting cindy's also an interesting one herself how, how so um she uh takes herself a little bit too seriously okay you know okay so and this is something that i think Meghan markle is guilty of too and i love Meghan markle but i think that like Sometimes, like, people, you're off put by someone's personality. Like, Tay was, like, losing her mind over, over Cindy Crawford. Like, not in a good way. Like, she was, like, she driving me nuts. In the documentary. Yes. And I was, like, it's not that Cindy's not smart. Because she is smart. But she goes out of her way to be, like, I'm smart. I'm smart. I'm smart. Yeah. So then you're, like, hyper analyzing everything she says. But also, I think that Cindy thinks she's, like, really, really funny. You know, it's... it's oh, that's tough. You can't be everything. You can't be beautiful, rich, and funny. PGS. Pretty girl syndrome. Yeah. And not all pretty girls, like, yeah. s suffer from this. But Cindy Crawford maybe does. And it's just like, I'm so funny. I'm so smart. And it's like, just be you. And we'll love you. And we'll, we'll find you funny and smart. Yes, but when you have to tell us, it's very annoying. Yeah. And so I think that, like, I think Meghan Markle, people, like, don't like her. And it's like, no, that's because you don't like her sense of humor. She mm. thinks she's funny. No, she's trying to be funny, but she's I really not she that funny. She wants to, you know, put out to the world that she's this really kind of sophisticated yes. person, and she is. And we could glean that, but you don't have to sit down and be like, we don't watch TV. Like, shut up. Like, people hate when people say that. Like, exactly. everybody watches TV. And it makes us feel bad. Like, we're yeah. stupid. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I don't think like her not going on 60 Minutes is a big deal, but I do think the book comes out next month. I do not think we will get a sit down interview. She's not mentally fit for it. And that's the reason, and that's fine. First of all, I don't think it will even affect book sales Same. whatsoever just because, I mean, it actually might even help them. Yeah, more mystery. Um, but I am worried about Brittany. Who isn't? Like, I just, you know, it, how about this? Let her do the book. Whatever the fuck she wants to do, I think she should do. The thing is, I think she needs money now. Like, I do think. For real? She hasn't been working for a while. She had an enormous amount of money that was dwindled by her conservatorship. Yes. By the time she got out of the conservatorship, I think there was a good chunk of money but not enough to never work again and to live this very, very right. premium lifestyle with this big wedding and every week taking a private jet to Maui with right. Sam. Like, right. I don't think there is, and she's done two songs. Tiny and Dancer, she just done won. great. Tiny Dancer was fine, but it's a collab with Elton John. Like, right. it's not gonna make you money for life. I feel was like, there are two oh, and Will I Am. Yeah, that I feel one like flopped. that flopped. I feel like uh, music alone doesn't really make money anymore. No, it doesn't. That's why every artist tours, right. merch, podcast like everybody does a million things to support the music right so <clears throat> i don't know she got what 15 million for the book yes you have to outsell that before you make any more money off the this 15. is something that nobody knows yeah so you get an advance for a book so hers is 15 million dollars they'll give you uh they split it into three chunks so that's five million upon signing yeah five million upon handing in your manuscript and then five million um upon publishing then in the months that follow, the publisher has to earn back $15 million in book sales before you make another cent. It's crazy. Now, I do think her book will out earn $15 million. If you don't hit it, do you owe? No. Retroactively? Okay, thank it's God. It's just like a bad investment for the publisher Got and it. they'll probably not give you a second book deal. Okay. Yeah. $15 million is a lot, but we always talk about this. We love to count people's money. We do. And, for a, and for stress a, ourselves out. For Britney Spears, $15 million is not a lot of it's money. It's not a lot. Considering just the life she leads, the right. big house, right. the jets, the glam. The security. The security. That's the real kicker. And then the lawyers, managers, and publicists who exactly. are on your payroll. Oh, and, forget you know, that. Business I mean, they managers. Take, they, they, right there, 30% is gone. Right. So let's say she gets the $15 million. Really, after taxes, it's $7 million. Yes. But you pay everybody on the 15th. No, you pay every, you, it's tax deductible commissions. Oh, what? Yeah, your commissions are tax deductible. So she, 10% <laughs> to an agent, 10% to a manager. Okay. 5% to a business manager. That's 25%. What's 25% of 7 million? Girl, you asking me? I didn't even Can know that I could deduce the taxes. 25% <laughs> of 7 million is... I want to say $1.5 million. Is that right? I feel like it's not. 1.75! So 7 minus 1.75 is 5.25. You're Rain Man. So of her $15 million, <laughs> she keeps 5.25. 
My brain is exploding and melting out my ears right now. I don't. I haven't heard anything you said in the last thirty seconds. Okay, so she got a fifteen million dollar book advance. Yes. What she will actually go home with is five point two five. That's not. That's nothing. Nothing. Chump change. So, she better out earn that book advance so she can make more money. Yeah, she needs to actually go on sixty minutes. She needs to do some press. <laughs> she does. I feel like they'll, they'll be giving excerpts to like book review, and so in the weeks leading up, we'll see like bombshell from Britney. So right. by the time it comes out, there's a lot of hype. But you got to do the rounds. But she's she's really not mentally fit for it. Yeah, I agree. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets for your favorite events should not be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. I feel like we live in a day and age where like getting tickets for stuff has become a torturous excursion and it's pricey and it's not fun and you never get the seats you want. And Game Time is here to just like alleviate some of the pressure so they are the place for last minute ticket deals forget planning months in advance like i'm just never going to be that type of girl i'm going to decide the day of if i want to go to something and game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts comedy theater and more the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price and if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason get images of your seats before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. It's literally two taps and you're all set. And then tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email, like waiting in line, holding everybody up, being like, wait, sorry, I can't find my tickets. Like GameTime makes it easy so you don't look like a dope in front of everyone. Snag the tickets without the stress with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code TOAST for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code TOAST for $20 off. Download the GameTime app today. It's last minute tickets. It's lowest price. It's guaranteed. Thank you, Game Time, for sponsoring today's episode. Today's episode is also brought to you by Lululemon, specifically Lululemon leggings. They have the best leggings, and thankfully, we are entering legging season. We're covering up our legs. We don't have to shave them anymore. So we're heading to Lululemon to find the perfect pair of leggings to cover our prickly little legs with. So there are so many different options when it comes to leggings. That's what I love about Lululemon. They have a ton of different pairs, like based on what you're looking for. But here are some of my favorites. The Fast and Free leggings, which are powered by New Lux. They provide a weightless, on-body sensation, and incredible coverage, and they're designed for those looking for a legging that gives them the complete freedom from distractions while running slash jogging. Also, the Wonder Train leggings. They're designed with one of Lululemon's most innovative fabrics, which is Everlux. The Everlux fabric is Lululemon's fastest drying fabric. The Wonder Train legging allow you to work hard and feel dry so you can effortlessly transition from sweat to street. They're great for activities like spin, also, the Align leggings, they're power, powered by the Nulu fabric, which is designed for the person who wants a lightweight, low compression yoga solution that is also versatile enough for casual wear. It gives the wearer a next to nothing body sensation and it gives the wearer the full freedom of movement so it doesn't restrict or compress the wearer in any way. It's great for low intensity workouts like yoga or just for casual wear. Like if you're the type of girly who loves to wear workout clothing without working out, like that's a valid way of living your life and don't let anyone tell you any different we've got you covered at Lululemon. Like from high intensity to low intensity, you're just sitting on your couch and you want comfy pants, Lululemon has you covered. So get into the Lululemon leggings. Like they are the leggings of the moment. She is the moment. You can get into them at lululemon.com. Of course, you can shop in store, but check out all the different type of, uh, types of leggings they have and be prepared for fall at lululemon.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Court Furniture Rental. Life is always changing. Your furniture should be able to change with it. And with Court Furniture Rental, you can get the furniture and services you need to help make everyday life transitions as seamless as possible. So whether you're doing a short-term distance move, you're relocating, you're starting a new chapter, or you simply just don't want to be tied down to owning furniture, Court is the solution for you. You'll simply pick the furniture you want then their expert team will deliver it and set it up. The furniture will be there when you need it and gone when you don't. Get furniture on your own terms with the Court Furniture Rental. Visit court.com slash podcast to learn more and find the furniture package that fits your life. Court is spelled C-O-R-T. You press play whenever you want. With the furniture rental from Court, you rent furniture when you need it and return it when you don't. So there's a million reasons. Like, I can't believe there aren't, you know, like more, like furniture rental has become this like obscure thing. It's so simple there's a million reasons why you might not want to own furniture, whether you live like a very, you know, wanderlust kind of life. You travel a lot. You're doing a short term stay somewhere. But also if you're not and you just don't want to own furniture, trends, trends in furniture change so frequently. Like to not own it is such a luxury and court is there for you. So make sure you go to court, C-O-R-T dot com slash podcast, C-O-R-T dot com to learn more and find the furniture package that will fit your needs. That's court, C-O-R-T dot com slash podcast for furniture rental, which is just a much more sustainable way of living 
And, you know, you don't have to lift a finger, which is just all right by me. Court.com slash podcast. Okay, let's do what my second Britney Spears okay. story, which is so weird that we have two Britney Spears stories. But I was shocked. I didn't um, hear about this. And I think this is in an effort to promote the book in kind of different and non-traditional ways because homegirl can't sit down for an interview right her 2002 movie crossroads is set for an october re-release in theaters oh my god which is amazing so britney spears's 2002 film crossroads is returning to the big screen the teenage dramedy featuring the princess of pop in her first feature role will be released in cinemas all around the world on october 23rd and 25th timed for the publication of her new tell-all memoir the woman in me so Trafalgar Releasing, which is the Sony Music Entertainment and RCA Records, announced the global fan event on Thursday. It does mean that Crossroads will go up against Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour. Oh, although Taylor Swift's new concert pick will have a much bigger footprint. Right. But also hers opens on October 13th and they're going 10 days later on October 23rd. Smart. So I think smart. she's okay. It will be playing in thousands of theaters across North America, the Eras Tour. Crossroads is about 875 okay. locations. Okay. So this is just like a cute, new and different way. And I imagine that the, the first feature film is like a big turning point in yes. her career and in the book. I think she probably talks about it a lot. And the title, The Woman in me is of course from the song I'm not a girl not yet a woman which was an original move, a song from the soundtrack Crossroads I'm not a girl don't tell me what to believe I'm just trying to find a woman in me that song was really important to me in the fourth grade <laughs> and if you don't know watch my comedy special Disgrace Queen available for free on Amazon Prime it was like an important coming of age story for me yes so I love this movie as much as I'm not like a diehard Britney this movie raised me like we had it on VHS we would play it rewind play it rewind like we were obsessed with this movie <laughs> it's the worst movie ever what you heard me <laughs> it's the best movie ever and let me, might I say star studded Zoe Saldana I know Taryn Manning eating people's butts yeah she's lost her mind <laughs> and wait Kim Cattrall pays, plays Britney Spears' mother who abandoned her. Oh! And Britney, Britney drives to Arizona to meet her mother. Spoiler alert, Kim Cattrall wants nothing to do with Britney Spears. You know what? I feel like maybe I've never seen it straight through. It is Let's the, go. Okay. I'll go to support go. Britney. Me, Taylor, it is the best movie. It's like one of the greatest movies of all time. I mean, I've definitely seen snippets yeah. of it, but maybe not straight through and through. Um, well... Writer's strike is always on the mind. So like Kim Cattrall will get residuals. Yes. As will Taryn. So she can continue. Taryn Manning has lost her mind. Her butt munching. I don't think so. I think she was just a woman fucking scorned in a moment. By then, who? By the man that she was cheating with. What are you talking about? Taryn Manning. She was just in her car saying that like, I love him and I eat his butt and his butt is so delicious. Okay, I'm talking about something else. She has like gone too bad making so many Instagram stories that Danny Masterson was wrongfully convicted of rape. No. And she's like, you all think I'm crazy, but I'm not. Like, she's um, nuts. The butt munching is what started it. Okay, tell me the butt munching story. Okay, so she was having an affair with a man. Apparently, she's kind of like addicted to married men. It's like her oh, brand. She was married. Okay. Yes. And so his wife was mad, understandably of so. Of course. And then Taryn was mad at the wife being mad. And so okay. she got in her car and she went crazy and posted it uh -huh. but she was basically like you think i'm crazy you're crazy and then you know she has a little like southern lispy thing yeah and then she was basically like i ate his butt and he liked it and i'll eat his butt again and i like eating people's butts and i was like did you, ever, did you ever watch orange is the new black <laughs> yes because she's literally turns in turned into her character pansatucky method acting yeah it's <laughs> she took method acting a little too far like Pensatucky, was that her name? Pensatucky. Yep, yep. She was like this, you know, quirky, nutty prison inmate. Meth addict. Yeah, meth addict, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, she took the role a little too seriously yeah, because she's become. I just, like, I, I'm joking about it, but like, I actually hope she's okay. But like, I really can't get behind her. I think she's okay because her apology sound, like, sounded like she, she was, was like, you all think I'm on pills, but I'm not. Uh, this is just says who someone, I says someone on pills. Really? I don't know. I imagine if I wasn't on pills, I would tell everyone I'm not on pills. That's true. <laughs> So what would a pill popper say? The same. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, the Danny Masterson stuff is bad. Yeah, I know. He, he's, you want to go on the side of innocence? No, but by the way, so she, we reported, we, we, we talked about yesterday on the toast that his wife, Bijou Phillips, is filing for divorce. Yes. Which we said was like a weird tactic to like stand by your man in his rape trial, but then so you obviously thought he was innocent and now he's an innocent man in prison and you're going to leave him. And somebody um, did point out that there will be civil suits launched against Danny Masterson. So maybe it's a financial maneuver. Right, which yep. is like just even more, I, like these are disgusting people. 
I support Bijou in this moment. You do? I mean, the lesser of two evils. Yeah, but like she's still standing by her man. But divorcing is at least... But she's sh- divor- it sounds like she's divorcing him on paper. Like she'll still go and visit him with the kids. With conjugal visits and stuff. Right. Yeah. Oh, God. I can't think of anything less sexy than prison. <laughs> Like, even if literally Jacob Elordi he wanted to fuck me, he's like, but we can only do it when I'm in prison during my conjugal visit. I'd be like, well, it's just not going to happen. I mean, can you imagine all of the venereal diseases? No, no, Ugh. no. Um, okay, so I love this, by the way. This is like actually smart marketing. Like, oh, we have a, a, a our talent can't sit down for an interview. We got to get creative. Yes. And they're re-releasing this movie is actually brilliant. And maybe it'll open up, you know, Gen Z to a movie they've never seen and they should see. It's a coming of age story. And That's it's a smart. Universal message. I love rock and roll. So put another time in. I love this movie. This movie means a lot to me, like for real. Okay, our next story. Oh, unwell. I just switched up our next story because I forgot that I wanted to talk about when you brought up Oprah. I forgot that Oprah was asked about Ozempic and she had some hot takes. Ooh. Which I find interesting. So Oprah Winfrey says she wrestled with the thoughts on Ozempic. Okay. And she said, if I take the drug, that's the easy way out, which is my least favorite thing for people to say. So Oprah Winfrey is joining the conversation surrounding uh, the usage of type 2 diabetes drug Ozempic for weight loss. The media mogul 68 recently hosted a panel um, discussing the obesity and weight crisis, which affects 2 billion adults globally. She held the conversation alongside obesity specialist Dr. Fatima Cody-Stanford and Dr. Melanie J. and a psychologist named Rachel Goldman, Jewish queen. Winfrey, who's a board member and shareholder of Weight Watchers, was also joined by Seema Sistani, who's a CEO of Weight Watchers. Right. And they recently, that's why I want to talk about it. Weight Watchers recently opened up about, yes. they started a new telehealth treatment option for weight loss drugs. They, um, it was big news. They had bought like major shares in like yeah. a Novo Nordisk. So they're, they're now in the Ozempic game. They're bringing some glutides into to, the Weight which Watchers is game. very smart because they've been at like that. They have been yeah. the leading sort of, they've Absolutely. made it through diet culture. Weight Watchers has just been like a leading weight loss yes. resource for many people. It's worked for so many people for 30 years. If they want, but also they changed up the program and it fucked me up. I'll did tell it? you that much. Yes, I did not like the new way of doing things. They were like, corn, a big lump of knobs. No, they were like zero points. I'm like, I will eat 25 yeah. years of corn. But I just it just wasn't like working for me. They've done a really good job of changing with the times. Like bringing in Oprah was really great Absolutely. for them. Absolutely. And so now like they're now WW. Like they, they keep up with the times where I feel like a lot of diets have been kind of canceled which says a lot though yeah they are they are here to stay right. and that is why they're with semaglutides because semaglutides are here to stay yeah, that's so the whole it thing it's kind of like a really i think big smart decision of them but i was curious what oprah had to say about it i think that oprah is also saying the easy way out because she has literal financial stake in people so, not just because why do you need weight watchers when you have ozempic i want to say i think a lot of the headlines did oprah dirty here's okay. what she really said okay okay Shouldn't we all just be more accepting of whatever body you choose to be in? That should be your choice. Even when I first started hearing about the weight loss drugs, at the same time I was going through knee surgery and I felt I've got to do this on my own because if I take the drug, that's the easy way out. She also explained that she was shamed in the tabloids every week for about 25 years for not having the willpower when it comes to her weight loss journey. And then the obesity medicine physician, Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford said, obesity is a chronic disease and willpower isn't a word that she uses when it comes to her patients. It's hard to see you ostracized in the way that you've been because this isn't about willpower it's not your fault it's how our bodies regulate weight and each of us is different each right. of us is unique no one is superior to another we're just different and acting on those differences and treating those differences in the heterogeneity of the population is how we're going to actually make changes to the disease so of course oprah has been vocal about her health journey um revealing in october 22 that she recovered from double knee surgery the year prior she said, I had knee surgery in August and then another in November. When I came home for the first time, I literally could not lift my leg. I couldn't lift my heel off the bed. And I vowed if I was ever able to get up, walk around and move again, that I would take advantage of my movement, exercise and being able to be fully in my body. So she didn't like, <clears throat> she didn't bash Ozempic, but like she didn't, she wasn't like a voice that we, we could have used her to be like a voice yes. of reason. Yes. And she, a lot of people really respect Oprah. I think a lot of like people of all sizes. She's kind of like a pillar in the overweight community, but yes. she's a global pillar. People just respect the fuck out of whatever she says and yes. she shuts people down all the time. And I would, would have loved for her to use this as an opportunity to shut people down because she of anyone should know how like a, obesity is a lifelong battle. Yeah. And I don't know, I just feel like she could have done better. It's giving, I'm on Ozempic, but I don't really want anyone to know because I have so much money in Weight Watchers. No, like, but Weight Watchers has a lot to gain from semaglutide. So if anything, Oprah as a board member should right? be 
praising it. No, because I literally the other day was like, why am I paying for Weight Watchers? I'm on Ozempic. It is natural. I don't need yeah. it. When I go off of Ozempic or my trizipatide, people right. get very mad at me about right. that. But like, I'll definitely go back on Weight Watchers. Just for right now, I don't need it because my willpower is like Ozempic is watching, a shot. Ozempic is watching your weight. You don't absolutely. need to watch it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So maybe that's why yeah. she's taking the stance she is. I just think there really needs to be more um, critical thinking and like nuanced conversation around Ozempic. I know. Every time it's in the media, it's like, you know, Jackie Goldschneider loves to clown on Ozempic. Um, yeah. And of I, course, I, our headline recently was like, it's, she's always talking about it. I starved myself to be thin, but I still wouldn't take Ozempic. Well, like, of course, that, Jackie. You're, no, you're, thank you for saying that. You're the exact type of person who shouldn't take Ozempic. Exactly. Her experience is totally colored. I mean, her opinion is totally colored by her own experience, yeah. which is fine, but she just shouldn't like make broad statements like with, you know, sweeping with wide strokes or whatever they say, because she's so clearly has a trauma and yes. that affects how she sees these things. But she she just can't even get into the mindset of someone with the opposite problem of her. She was striving to right. be skinny and was doing everything she can to be skinny. And she can't even grasp the opposite of that. People who literally cannot stop gaining weight, no matter how hard they try, nothing works for them. She can't even empathize with that person. Yes. She can't see any experience other than her own, which is fine. So her to say, I would never take Ozempic, you shouldn't. Right. You're literally the exact type of person a doctor would not recommend it for. Exactly. But stop like making, you know, broad statements about other people. Like it just bothers me. And me so too. for Oprah, I felt like this could have been such a fabulous, powerful conversation. I know. And I feel like Oprah let us down. She did let us down. She did. She let oh, the, she let Cindy Crawford down. She let the chubbies down. She really did. I don't know, like, it could have been, it could have been major. I know. We just need, we need more people like doing what we do. I feel like in, I think it's going to be like two years, but definitely five. Like people are going to be looking back on the times that they were criticizing Ozempic. Like what the fuck was I doing? No, I mean, there's just like such a lack. Look at the of, last laugh. There's such a, la a lack of logic because people are always like, well, we don't know what it's going to, what it's going to do to people. Like actually we do. The drug has been around. It's not new. It's been around for 15 years. People yes. with diabe diabetes have been taking it yes. for years. That's why so many doctors feel so comfortable yeah. prescribing it to patients because it has a track record. They're like this newfangled drug. Yeah. It's not new, girl. Like, yeah. It's been around for a really long time. And when you say that, you're like basically screaming, like, I don't know any doctors. And it's like, yeah. I feel bad for you. Right. Because like I'm should, surrounded by doctors. Me too. I'm just like... And it's like amazing. I'm basically a doctor. I pretty much am a doctor, I would say. <laughs> All right, are you ready for a fifth and final story? Yes. Have you been following the story of the <clears throat> plain video that went viral where this Instagram model was like, I'm an Instagram famous person. Like, she <laughs> no. was being crazy. Okay, people are just like obsessed with it now. They found out who she was. She actually is Instagram famous. She was getting booted off a plane and everybody... What's Instagram famous? She, she had 900,000 followers. And I think, <gasps> I think she has more now. Girl! Because she really went viral. She and is. She's wearing like this skin tight gray bodysuit. I was like, oh my On God. On a plane? Yeah, like a onesie. Like, like a unitard? Unitard. Stop. She had an amazing body. How'd and she pee? It was and a gray. Lot. I mean. Light gray. She is not brave. okay. She is braver than any woman <laughs> I've ever met. Okay. So people figured out who she was and now she's speaking out. It appeared in the video she was getting booted off the plane and everybody was like, boo, get off, get off. And she's, oh, fuck you, fuck you, I'm Instagram famous. Like, I hilarious. like her energy. So they should be friends with her. I know, that's literally me. <laughs> um, so the Instagram model uh, in plane meltdown says that she left to avoid knocking her seatmate the fuck out. She claims she wasn't kicked off the plane. She left because her seatmate was annoying her. So self-proclaimed Instagram famous model Morgan Osman denies that she was actually booted from the American Airlines flight okay. in her now viral video moment, insisted that she left to avoid knocking her annoying seatmate the fuck out. Now, the reason why I chose this story is because they found out who she was. Uh -huh. And the reason is so clear. Like, this, this next sentence will clear everything up for you. The Bad Girls Club alumna told TMZ on Wednesday that while she didn't mind being called the latest crazy plain lady, the backlash to her video was unfair because it didn't show that she had been provoked before storming off the jet. Okay. She said, I was just living life. It was the lady next to me. She came in so hot. And she said, this is what she said of the woman who kept telling her to get up. She had neon blue hair. I'm dead. She was very special. I don't know who you think you are. This is what she said to her seatmate. I don't know who you think you are talking to me, but it won't be me. Question. Yeah. First class or economy? Coach. <laughs> and she sat down next to me. She got on FaceTime. She's making fun of me on FaceTime, the influencer claimed. <gasps> so I said to myself, Morgan, this is not the flight for you. You already missed one flight. Just get off the flight because I'm going to knock her the fuck out. 
<clears throat> it was only when she decided to remove herself and wave down the stewardess that mm -hmm. people then whipped out her ca their cameras. Okay. The now viral video shows Osman clad in a curve hu hugging gray bodysuit, bickering with other passengers and telling one of them, film me, I'm Instagram famous, you fucking bum. I love her. No, I'm kind of obsessed. She no. told TMZ, I still think they're a bunch of fucking bums. They are bums. I mean, listen, you can't dress like that and act crazy. You have to wear like sweatpants and hide and with a hoodie if you're going to like lose your fucking shit. Do you drink on planes? Um, You know what? I used to and I kind of stopped this last tour. So now it's kind of re-regulated me. But I used to get, I mean, fucking hammered on flights. Like I have never ever once had an altercation on a flight. Like I avoid conflict. I avoid any mm. sort of fighting. Um, but I imagine if I was the type of person who had cocktails on a plane, like I would look for a fight. You definitely would. So I, I don't know like how people drink on flights for a multitude of reasons. Like, don't you get a headache? No, but, but you do get way more fucked up from less when you're, mm. cause altitude. I have been drunk on a plane once and, and I was going to Mexico. I was with Brian Kelly. Okay. We had a layover in Houston, so we were in the lounge. And, you know, I flew with Brian, so they, like, picked us up. They drove right. us. They gave us this fancy lounge. We had margaritas, and we saw two other people on the flight that we knew. So they joined us in the lounge. We're partying. We're drinking. They're on our flight to Mexico. It's first class, so there's, like, eight seats. I know four of the people. Right. We're all listening to the same pair of headphones, listening to music, like, getting wasted. And we were definitely, like, drunk enough to be, like, a problem. But we were just having fun. Like, we were not disrupting. Right. And the flight attendant couldn't have been nicer. He was like, I just want to make sure, like, you guys aren't driving. We're like, no, we have a car picking us up. And he was like, oh, my God. The most passive aggressive way of saying you guys are drunk. No, but he was lit. Like, he was honestly, I believe, <laughs> he was like a gay man. And okay. I, was, it was, I was with three gay men. Right. So it was very, like, simpatico energy. Yes. And, and then I looked back, like, the next day. I was like, damn, I was really drunk on that plane. And I've never been drunk. I'm like, oh, God. Like, what was I capable of? But I've never been drunk on a plane before. You're capable of screaming at everybody you that know, you like, are internet famous. No, honestly, it was nice to know, like, <laughs> if I'm, like, drunk on a plane, I'm just a good time. I am always ready for a fight in a plane. I'm, I want to fight you about my overhead space. Yeah, the overhead I wanna, space. Uh, I will fight you about, like, like just a million different things. I am, I'm an open nerve. Yep. So I am very much in support of this bad girl. The people in first class are really fucking annoying about um, the overhead bin space. Share once you're all there, can I have a little square? No, I'm not talking about that. Once they're all there, for sure. Yeah. But people in first class like love to come to first class and super late. Yes. And just expect that there's space for them. And there are other people in first class. So like to come on late, yep. your fellow first class cabin passengers have taken the space yes and to throw a hissy fit like well i'm in first class i deserve to have space so it's like you gotta get here on time girlfriend they have like a complex when i the very infrequent times that i'm first class the way i look everybody that comes up down the aisle up and down i'm the biggest fucking asshole when i'm first class yeah Ugh. you know i'm like modest about it i just keep my head down I just look at everybody's outfits. No, it's so funny. Like when you're not in first class, you look at the first class pa passengers with such contempt, <laughs> with such like jealousy and hatred. Totally. And when you are in first class, like, and you see people walking by, like you actually, like, you know what that's like. Like you feel like, like you want to tell them, like, I don't always fly first class. Not like, me. Momentarily, I'm like, I am better than everyone. Oh, so you take, you don't take the high road. No, I take the lowest of the low. That's so you. And I know it I absolutely, is. one thing about you, like you're going to be consistent. <laughs> Consistently toxic. Consi name of your first memoir. Consistently toxic. The consistently toxic lesbian. lesbian. <laughs> I was waiting no, for no, it. No, you need to have it. The consistently toxic lesbian who took Ozempic. <laughs> but it's actually trisepatide. It needs to just be like fully encapsulate your journey. Who fraudulently laughs at Claudia Oshry. Yes. There you go. Colon, the Taylor Strecker story. <laughs> was that a real laugh or a That was laugh? a real one. You make me cackle. You. I'm a cackling hag when I'm with you. I don't know if I believe you. Claude Ed, stop. No it. kidding. You give me such a hard time. I love you so dearly. I mean, the feeling is quite mutual. This, I think, like, for me, I feel good. Like, I made up for my poor performance on last episode. You were fabulous last time. No, I was just, like, quiet and, like, clenching my butt cheeks together. Everyone mm. needs to know that Claudia was spiraling so hard. She sent me baked by Melissa cupcakes. I felt so bad. I was like, I made her come all the way. And, like, I just, like, Claudia. sunk it up. Literally, did I you had eat the, the cupcakes. I absolutely did. Every single one. No, I'm on that big. Now your wife's gonna get fat. <laughs> she was like, I cannot believe Claudia sent these. I know, I'm such a toxic Ozempic friend. <laughs>
Well, I love you. If you guys enjoyed what you he heard here today, Taylor Schrecker is a fabulous podcast host. She has two shows. Her free podcast is called Taste of Taylor. They just released a new episode today, so they release episodes every Thursday. Yes. I'm on a little on it a lot. Yes. She has great guests. It's super funny. It's pop culture. It's lifestyle. It's comedy. It's everything. It's Taste of Taylor. <laughs> Available wherever you get your podcast. And she also does a daily show, much like the toast. It's on Patreon. It's six dollars and ninety five cents. Yes. For the entire month, she does an hour every single day with her, her co hosts, her friends, pop culture. It's good stuff. She talks a lot about Ozempic, so if you're fatigued of that, just be warned. <laughs> and it's fabulous. It's patreon.com slash the Taylor Strecker show. Don't miss it. It's fabulous. Support our girl who supports the toast in our times of need. Oh, so thank you, Taylor, for being here. I love you. I love you. And thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast of the Monday Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday. New tips if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe to give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast and our podcast we found on Spotify, and Stitcher, Public Radio, I Radio Cast Box, all the places where we listen to podcasts. Find us at Toast Five Star Review, but I'm beautiful, stunning, and we get little talented. We are. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.